first of all, thank you for coming back and listening to our DIY series, How to Make a Kick-Ass Web Series with No Money. Today, I have Robert Flowers with me. Uh, Robert Flowers uh, was a cinematographer on our web series called The Institute. Some of the things we talk about is 18 and over, being that the web series is set in the 70s about a group of actors who want to act in porn. But it's a fun comedy show, and we're talking about some real filmmaking here. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about how we just found ways to solve problems without inflating the budget, the creative ways that we lit the scenes. We're going to also talk about how we came to the decision of using the cameras that we used for this show. So uh, sit back with us. Me and Robert geek out every time we talk to each other. So, of course, we did it here. It was a lot of fun recording this episode. So I hope you have fun listening to it. So let's go. Now, as a method actor, I like to transform into whatever the role requires of me. Okay, whether that be a pizza delivery boy servicing a customer, let's say he doesn't want cheese, he wants sausage. I'm going to give him that sausage because that's what I do. I don't act. You never act. You become. And then you come. You so amazing, yeah. Paul. Well, uh, I myself uh, dabble in method acting, of course, on the set of Sex Ninja. I ingested nothing but sticky rice balls for three weeks straight. Every time I came, it's like a goddamn wedding. Any questions? Paul, how do you prepare for a role? That's a great question, Sal. Excuse me, see you guys. Are you an aspiring filmmaker looking to leave your mark on the big screen? You've come to the right place. Welcome to Hollywood Hate Me with your host, T. Huff. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know what the hell happened, but my uh -huh. kids put on their headphones and started playing around with, with the microphone uh -huh. and stuff and started singing and then, like, record them, <laughs> recorded themselves. And I right. think they, like, deleted your one track. Because I have the ones where I have the tracks where, you know, where we got the bonus, the bonus tracks. But the, right. but the main, the meat and potatoes was right. gone. Yeah, so I that's, think that's what happened. Yeah, that's the danger of, of recording to, to devices these days. Even still, just like the old days with tape, you can still record over shit, you know. <laughs> that that problem will never go away. <laughs> so, you know, it was it was fun. We, we we was able to still put out a lot of good tips and yeah. stuff. And then right. I was like, shit. I was thinking, oh, this <laughs> this one's gonna be the easiest to edit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's easy, all right. <laughs> Cause you yeah. Was, Cause you was spitting all that knowledge. So I was like, man, I could just let Robert talk. Oh Jesus! I, that, it's, I don't know if it's knowledge. It's just bullshit masquerading as knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically what we all do, right? Right. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's an art to it though. The art of BS is what you're doing. I mean, <laughs> so just to keep it light, Tyrone, because it's not like we're we're doing rocket science. <laughs> oh, let me turn the TV in the other room off too. Yeah, that sound creeping in. Hold on a second. Watching Shark Tank. It's like my new, my new favorite show to watch. It's not. It's a good show though. It's a real good show. I mean, I'm trying to apply it to to movies too. It's like, oh, you know, it's like because because yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, the especially now, I mean, you go. It's like, that's what it's like to pitch investors. In fact, I'm pitching a potential investor for a horror movie on Friday. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm really soaking in the shark tanks to get geared up for that because, you know, their, their focus is not our focus. Our focus is never like, this is going to make, you know, this is going to make this much money and blah, 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 blah. Like, we're like, no, this is going to be a cool movie. And they're like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Like, we'll make money. <laughs> that's that's because that's what they care about because they're the money people it's why they have money and we don't unfortunately so okay is this a movie <laughs> that you wrote i'm in the middle of uh writing it with uh with the guy who's going to direct it oh things like 
oh, you know, the, one of my friends who's an actress has uh, a friend who has some money who's interested in, in getting into it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's like that's how you always hear it, right? Yeah. I have, you know, I have a buddy. I even, even on the road, like, so I was out of town. Even one of the guys is like, so you're in Hollywood, right? So I have this idea for for a movie. Who do I talk to? Like, uh, okay. Yeah, like, no bullshit, man. And I'm like, no, no, oh, I know God. exactly what you're talking about. I hear it too. I hear it a lot. I know. I know. And I'm like, oh, God, no. And he's like, so you yeah, have this cool idea, you know, but I'm not a writer. But I mean, maybe you can point me in the direction of someone who could help me make it. It's like, you haven't written anything, and an idea is a dime a dozen. Like, no one gives a shit about your ideas. They yeah. give a shit about what you have in the 110 pages of paper, man. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> what know, I, and... <laughs> that's what I try to tell people, too. Yeah, the, uh, do you have anything written down that I could read? Yeah. yeah. And I usually, you know, the first, yeah, I the first thing they're going to after yeah. that. Yeah, they, they go, uh, no, I'm not a writer, but I was hoping I could partner up with somebody. I'm like, that's code for where you want someone else to do all the work and you want to take some of the credit. <laughs> I'm like, no. And then the second thing is like, if I knew peeps who were like what you're looking for, why would I send you to them <laughs> instead of me? Why would I? Sh- who the fuck are you, dude? Like, really? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, I'm just like, I would be using those connections to, uh, yeah. to, to, to move my career forward. Or right, at least to get man. it started. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and like, and I don't even know you like, I, you don't even have a thing like, like you don't have, you need to have the thing. Like you need to have the script, the pilot, the short the feature, the thing you need to have. A, it's the chip at the table or you don't get in and get to play a hand. An idea is not going to get you past the bouncer at all. It's like going to a club and you, with you and just a bunch of dudes and the guy's like, no, man, like, you know, we can't have just a bunch of dudes. Man. You're like, well, you're, you know, where are the girls? And you're like, yeah. you gotta go get some girls. And you know, we have to have to keep the, we have to keep the ratio set. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Oh, so I know, exactly. it's, <laughs> I know too many swords to the party. Yeah. So it, it's exactly like that. And like, oh no, like don't, 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 just, just don't, just stop, just stop. <laughs> Just stop. And he would and he and he's nice. And these people are nice people too. It's not like they're jerks or nothing. They just they just have no idea. And I'm like, oh man, like oh no, ah, no, no. I'm, I met some great great people too. Like you know, especially that I have like a decent amount of followers on Twitter and stuff. And you right. know, people are like contacting me, and I and I give them some input or some advice. You know, but yeah. then when they start asking, like, well, can you hook me up with anybody? I'm like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Which is funny because, like, that's what I would be doing to someone. Because I follow people on Twitter too, and like, you know, these are people who sh- who are showrunners. I'm like, you can't do that. I mean, how, you know, how many times they must get that crap? Like, yo, can you hook me up? Can you like, give me an interview? Can you do this? Can you do that? And like, you know, like they they get it all the time. I'm like, and that, yeah. the cool thing about that stuff is you <clears throat> may you might glean some cool knowledge. And like, hey, this is a cool rule about running a show, and like. If your budget is X and your page count is Y, there's a formula like so you don't go over budget. Like if you can cut this, do it. If you can save this, do it. Like like the meat and potatoes of like making stuff. Yeah. Like that stuff that stuff is priceless. That's yeah. like yeah. better than film school, like by a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's and that's what some of the stuff I try to uh, you know, uh re, uh try to give back. I I guess you could say give back because I, I spent a lot of money on that uh film school education so i tried to uh yeah no shit man. i try to give some of that knowledge out to people so you know <laughs> so they don't have to go through film school to figure out that oh you don't use most of it you, know? you should be like i should be charging you guys six hundred dollars a credit hour <laughs> yeah no weird questions are we on the podcast yet let's yeah oh, I, oh, i've been recording oh, yeah are you recording? okay so this is the thing we didn't touch on last time, which is the amount of information out there. Like we are truly in an age that it's almost impossible unless you try to like not know some stuff because it's right in front of you. And like when I do do a project, I can research it like on my phone or you just search stuff, ask Google, whatever the hell you want. And Google will give you some answers. Like, you know, what about this? And Google spits out a bunch of crap and you can look at it and research it and cross reference it and, and look at other stuff. And well on Twitter too, like you got the no film school peeps, 
You have the the one guy who does all that stuff for Canon who has information. I mean, you really can glean your own personal schooling online through various sources. And they're like, it's really good. They're like our Cine 101 class, you could get that just by looking stuff up on the web. They have videos and examples. I mean, there's, there's tons of information, technical stuff yeah. that you can learn. I mean, and then you have writing and directing. There's so much information out there. And there's examples like academic resources that you don't you can get away with not going to school and dropping 50K or 100K. You can just yeah. listen to people and you get to listen to people that actually are doing it, too. Like if you yeah, follow like, a few like writers, ourselves. <laughs> yes, like ourselves, you know, and, and it's uh, free <laughs> and it's free. It's, can you believe that it's free? fucking free <laughs> i have a friend who would talk about stuff when he was a kid you know he's my age and he's like you know treasure hunting trying to find information on how they did stuff making movies like this is like early 80s like think about what it was like in the early 80s you see star wars or indiana jones you're like oh cool like how did they do that whoa that's you hear things like oh that's rotoscoping or that's models or mm -hmm. or you know how do they do space unbelievable Oh, it's my yeah. dog barking at the neighbors again. Basil, hush up over there, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that stuff was so hard to come by, and it was such a secretive like thing. It was almost like it's alchemy. It was like, ooh, like how do they do that? It's magic. And like now you can look it up, and people love posting stuff like how they do it. Like you know, you see those what the the shot really was, like little montages where it's like a bunch of green screen. Yeah, isn't and that they, stuff and they, awesome? Yeah, and then they build the environment. And mm -hmm. I'm not even talking like huge CGI movies. I'm talking about regular TV. We're like, oh, they need to build like a little creek here. They need to build a mountain here and stuff. And they just add it and post, Oop, there you go. Yeah. I'm like, it's it's ridiculous. And it's only going to get more like that. Like there is a new camera. What was it? Was it called the Lytro camera that my friend saw at, uh, at NAB this year? And you don't need a green screen anymore. It, it separates middle ground, foreground, and background. And you can just pull stuff. And you can just cut in between takes and manipulate the hell out of it. It's like super insane. And it has like a ton of lenses in it. And it's all, it captures all this photometric data. You can add depth of field, take it away. It's, you know, my, my friend was describing, I'm like, that just sounds insane. Like, uh, just think of the possibilities. And but again, you can learn about stuff like that because new stuff's coming out and the information is out there for you if you want to get it. And I think that's just, that's just amazingly cool. Like the whole point of going to film school for you and me, it was like you get stuff. You get the yeah. you get the cameras, you get the post production, you know, you get the, the sound stuff, you get the studio time. Yeah, you like, get the sound stages, you get the yeah, you get the uh, ADR booths and the right. And, and all that mm -hmm. other post stuff. No, you don't need the school to get your post up. You can edit on your phone almost. You can edit on your laptop. I mean, Adobe Premiere is ridiculous. You can do so much stuff with that. Uh, it's, it's it's nuts. And then, uh, you know, the cameras too. You can shoot a, a movie on your phone. You yeah. can shoot it on your, your Red. You can shoot it on your Canon. And, uh, and they're accessible. You know, even rental houses, you can still get them fairly decent. And if you, you know, I mean, a T2i or T2 or T4i or whatever out, you know, some of the stuff I've shot recently, they aren't super expensive $100,000 cameras um, like when you and I started going to school. And then you have, exam you know, you have all these tutor things that you can look up, like how to shoot like this, you know, like, and YouTube is just another resource. You know, YouTube came out when we were in school. No. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember someone in my class, Tristan, remember Tristan? She works at CAA now. Yeah. But I think she put she put one of her movies, like oh, it's maybe it's a second year film or something, on YouTube. Like, what the hell is YouTube? Broadcast yourself. I think we're like this is the little yeah. thing on it. And I was like, whoa, this is cool. Like, it's insane. And like, and now it's so commonplace. It's such a, a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it it's it's mind blowing. You know, some people were telling me that you know before it was like you need a script and. And then you can, you know, take a meeting and, and they like the script and they want to see what, you know, what's next and everything. Now it's like if you have a script, you almost have to have the proof of concept to go with it. Like, well, show me what it, what it is. Yeah, at least. Everyone, right. Yeah, because everyone starts to, you know, anticipate or, you know, assume that, well, everyone can make stuff now. So just go go make it. Make me five minutes of it and then I can show it. 
you know, to, to somebody who can make decisions, you know, yeah. and some people, some people say like, you know, executives aren't the most imaginative of people, which I thought was pretty funny. So they like. Hello. You know, I don't know what weird. happened. I, 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 my, uh, I think my phone actually rang and then I like, you know, turned it off and then it disconnected from you for a second. I was like, Whoa. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's use that to like transition into what you you were saying about people pretty much have to have like a proof of concept. And that's one of the, the reasons why me and Mike created the Institute, which is why we're here to talk just as a proof of concept. But have it be right. a web series that could hopefully later, you know, transition into, you know, I don't know, some some other network, let's just say mainstream network. Right. And uh, we did it for very little to no money. And right. uh, yeah, yeah. And I got you here because you were the main man on the set, you know, the, the uh, cinematographer. <laughs> so uh, that. what's that? Yeah, that's, that's right. You know, it's yeah. uh, you need the you need the proof of concept now more than ever. And it reminds me of a story about you ever see the show Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I think that yeah. the, they did a, the pilot of that. I think. I remember the story correctly. They shot a pilot of that to to show, and it was like for no money, like literally, like like no money. They just did it, and and that helped them uh, a great deal. So I mean, you know, I think Tyrone, we could take the institute now, you take it around and show people, and still keep trying to you know pitch it. I mean, edgy for its time. You know, maybe it was too edgy for when we did it, but like now, I feel like. You know, you could go somewhere with that. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so let me get to this first quick question, which is uh, okay. Um, so, what was it that brought you onto the project besides me calling you up? What made what, what attracted you to uh, taking on this crazy web series? Well, the, well, besides you, um, just when you when you told me what it was, like that's the other thing too. Is like you know part of what makes you choose stuff is who you work with and what it is you're going to do. And like, like this just sounded like, Oh, this could be funny. This could, this could, this could, we could have some laughs here. Um, and it, and it's, and it's teetering on the edge of, you know, edgy. Is it too, did we go too far or, you know, or not enough, you know, and still maintain humor. Uh, yeah. Like why not? And plus like, you know, you always say yes, say yes more than you say no if you can you know is, is a good motto to have sometimes i because i regret it some of the times i've said no and um and so yeah, i always I, my advice always is try and say yes more often than you say no it's just funner that way okay all right so so when you you thought it was a great idea you thought it was funny but then when we right. told you as far as how many episodes we're going to try to shoot and uh, how many days we have, and that we had no money. What did you think after that? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, you know, he's like, all right, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna be one of those. We're gonna try and do a lot with little, and and uh, okay, let's uh, buckle your chin strap and 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 go. I mean, you're always worried, at least for me. Like, okay, you want to do how much, how little time? Okay, deep breath, and then you know eventually you see how it can come together, and and plus we had a good team, so I mean everyone everyone was was on point, and uh, you know which only reinforces the fact that you know good people can make up for so much, and and uh, and never underestimate the value of having good good people working uh, for you and with you. Um, take good people over good gear. If those are the only choices you have, um, would be my advice for that too. Okay. And then, uh, our choice in gear, since you, you said gear, uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. One of the reasons why I like working with you is because you, you are always trying to find a creative way to solve a problem just like myself. And, uh, and then, like you said, you with the yes, I didn't, I didn't just approach you because you're a yes man. But I know that right. you, you like to try new things and just see if we could pull it off. You know? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. A challenge is always a big part of it. It's like, oh, you know, can we do this? I think we can do it. You know, that's, you know, you say yes. And then you got to like, oh, shit. Now, how are we going to do it? And then, <laughs> you know, 
and that's when you're really in the game. You're like, okay, yeah. now I said, yeah. So let's 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 figure out how we're, gonna, how we're gonna do it. And I think we I think we did you know I think we did a you know bang up job doing that. Um, but yeah, first you're you're shitting your pants, going wondering how you're gonna do it, and then you just you know let's figure out what's the first problem we gotta figure out. Okay, it's this. All right, so how are we gonna do this? And then and then next. Yeah, yeah. Cause, what's the what's the next setup? You know, where are we at? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we we wanted the we wanted the web series to look like it was actually shot in the seventies by some old seventy. I mean, not seventies. Well, it's going to obviously be a seventies camera, but some old film camera. And, right. Uh, and we couldn't actually get a film camera to do that. So no. we, we went. So we went yeah. with uh, the camera that you had actually. And, yeah, and did we do some tests and then see if we could throw some video filters on it or something? I don't. I think I, I think know. we did. I, I think I also felt like that's something we could definitely enhance in post. Like there was a certain uh, level of uh, that we could of artistry that we could we could kind of dial in. Like oh, you know, we can we can give it a little bit of a of that older vintage look. Because like one of the things with the, with the camera um, that I was thinking of is let's let's not make it such a clean image you know with video sometimes it can be too clean i mean especially when we were talking about this being period so let's let's how can we kind of muck it up a little bit and, and i've done some things before where i've like put nets around it or or you know you just just try and take some of the edge off really and i think mm-hmm. we were able to do that and plus the way we were we were shooting it too like uh, kind of lent itself to that and and help uh, get us get us that look, but yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't too worried about uh, about getting as close to that kind of look um, that we wanted. It was, I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, which and which what camera was that again? It was Panasonic HVX. Oh, 200. Panasonic, was, Panasonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was like the the one up from the the DVX one hundred, which was on tape. Remember when you used to shoot stuff on tape, yeah. like. Uh, but the HVX was like these P2 cards, which are like they're relics now. They probably belong in a museum. But like there's these thin, you know, long cards that are like ten times the size of your little SD cards now, and uh, which made it easier for like just uploading and 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 trans you know transferring it to hard drives and then putting it back in the camera and just keep keeping the the workflow going and then. Uh, and obviously making sure you're just not recording over your stuff, which is uh, a point of nervousness for me always. But I've, I've never I've, I've never lost a card uh, shooting that HVX. So, um, but yeah, that was, that, was, that was a trusty camera. It was a workhorse. Got a lot of miles out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got a lot of miles out of it. Yeah. Because I mean, sure. we, we shot on the weekends, right? We shot mm-hmm. on the weekends. I think the very first... Our first run was like a four days in a row, and then after that we just shot on like Saturday and Sunday, right? And another Saturday right, right. and Sunday, yeah, yeah, but, right. But we were shooting uh, how many pages a day we had to we had to shoot to make our days. Remember, we were shooting a lot. Yeah, we were sh- we were shooting like over over ten. E- I think easily o- over ten, and and we uh, and multiple episodes too. Like that's the thing is the keeping track of what the hell we're shooting. Like, okay, this is this episode. This is this episode. We're here. We're gonna shoot it here, and, and shoot it all out, and then just stick the you know, get the actors going, uh, back and forth to wardrobe if they needed, and just keeping track of everything because we were so pressed uh, for time. Yeah, yeah. And th- well, and those and those days went by fast too. You think a day is like, oh, we have time. Like, no, you know, it goes by in like 10 minutes. It really does. <laughs> yeah, it did. But we never really shot over 12 days. I mean, 12 hours. I'm sorry. We never no. shot over 12 hours. No, no, no. We were good about that. We never, we didn't try and grind everyone down to a pulp, which is, which is good. Cause you start to lose focus and your, uh, uh, your thought process and and you're you're a little off i think there's a lot of diminishing returns starts to kick in yeah so and, I know, uh, so i know i know when you said uh, about 10 pages a day i know uh, some of the listeners have to think like yeah fucking right so let's <laughs> let's uh 
let's pretty much try to, you know, talk about how we were able to move so fast. I mean, you already said that we, you know, we shot like multiple pages from different uh, scripts, you know, yeah. different scenes. We shot completely out of order. I think yep. we, we shot like three episodes each weekend, right? Yeah. About yeah. three episodes. So, so what we, yeah. Uh, what we did is we uh, sat down and like, you know, lined the script and then we, right. we, we had diagrams of like the, the, the actual space because, yeah. you know, we had the warehouse right from the beginning. Yeah. So we, we knew the space because, we, and then did we have that warehouse for about a month? We had it for a long time. I like, like we, we owned that place. Right. Um, and I think the, I mean, we were working around uh, some some of the days. They were they had stuff going on there, and like, did they have like an art gallery thing that that was happening like around when we were shooting? And we had to like you know move our stuff out of the way and like shoot only certain spots. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, I, I vaguely remember that. And then you know, some of those spaces there, people worked in. It was like their little mini office and stuff, and. I think that happened, you know, maybe once, but yeah, I mean, yeah. And then we had, to, we, we, when we left for the day, we had to move stuff. Well, we, we couldn't leave it, everything anyway, but we had to move yeah. stuff off to the side. Cause then they had band practice in there as well. Yes. Yes. Somehow they had band practice in there, even though there was a lot of, there was a lot of brick and which is the worst acoustics you could <laughs> possibly have for a band. Like if your ear just gotta be squealing. Right. Um, but you know, we had, so it wasn't a walk away, you know, and a walk away is exactly what it says. You can just walk away and leave the set. It wasn't a walk away. We had to like wrap, you know, semi wrap stuff and then we could leave. And then, and then then of course the next day that eats into your, you know, startup time too, because you got to set the ship back up and then go. So, you know, that, that was a, that was a little obstacle, but I mean, we, we worked through it. I mean, like 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 we did with most things, just kind of power through. Yeah, because what we did, we we uh, decided where we were going to shoot first, right? Yep. And then that one room, or let's say the classroom, or the 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 theater, you know, I'm putting up the quote here. I'm putting yeah. up the quotes. The <laughs> theater, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 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 like if we knew that we were going to shoot inside the classroom, we're shooting against the chalkboard. Okay, we looked mm-hmm. at all the scenes that said chalkboard. Are the teachers talking at the chalkboard? And yeah, we shot all of those. And, and then mm-hmm. while that was happening, we had the uh, the set designer, the set uh, people constructions. I mean, con- constructing sets, are building yeah. you know uh, building stuff off off uh, off to the side. That was going to be the next place that we were going to shoot. Yeah, yeah, it really made for efficient uh, shooting, especially from obviously from camera's perspective because we're like okay we're lit here let's let's nail everything we can because we're here and uh you know again you know not having to take time for different setups because every between every setup and every minute you burn it, it, it adds up and that's very valuable i mean at the end of the day if you're shooting you know a full day you know a couple minutes here between each setup is is it's like a is worth at least another setup that you could have had if you didn't waste those two minutes and so we were very, very conscious of that, very efficient for that. And, and, uh, and, and we were also balancing because sometimes, you know, there was a big wardrobe change or a big set thing that we had to like tweak and we could go somewhere else and shoot and then come back. I mean, and that's all balancing. That's something you have to decide and know on the day, like, okay, it would normally make sense for us to keep the camera here and keep shooting here. But we have like, you know, this big change here that's going to take 20 minutes. So what can we get while we're waiting for that? I mean, remember that time? I think that was a big thing we would always have a conversation about between setups. It's like, what can we get now? Yeah. Can yeah. we get this I now? Was, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. right. Sometimes yeah. can... we will go into the broom closet. Okay, there's some scenes in the broom closet. We only need one light. So let's go right. in there and shoot that while you guys set up the next scene. Right. Right, exactly. Well, you know, instead of waiting the 20 minutes, you know, like, which is normally what you're doing, everyone's just waiting. Like, we didn't have the luxury of waiting. Like, we got we got to use that 20 minutes. So while they're setting that up, what can we get over here? Can we get something? And then, we, you know, you would look at the script. Maybe there was an insert. Maybe there was a thing that ties this shot 
to this shot in this episode or uh you know the 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 broom closet the uh the uh faculty lounge <laughs> you know it was like um our cover set almost well you just, just just go there and knock some stuff out you know yeah yeah we have, we have all we, the stuff you know we, yeah we were able to go in there close the door you know and and not get, yeah. uh, have sound you know decent sound and yeah shoot yeah yeah, like all right, we got that. All right, great. Check that off. Oh, and they're ready now. So let's go back to with the setup we were we were gearing up to do, and get that. And we just got this extra bonus stuff. It was all about getting bonus stuff. But all about grabbing grabbing the stuff as as you were as you saw the opportunity to take it. You know. Now the other thing we don't you don't want to have happen because I've seen this happen too is like you go okay we can get this other thing while we're waiting for this setup. Setup A is going to take twenty minutes. Let's do this setup B over here. And setup B is kind of a pain in the ass. And you end up spending way too much time on setup B and you fall behind getting back to setup A and you've kind of screwed yourself. You know, yeah. you, you've totally you've totally negated any advantage you've had by doing that. So uh, you know, that's I feel like that's an intuitive thing that, you know, as you shoot more, you know how long things take and what you're trying to do. Uh, it becomes an intuitive decision to make. And I think you get that by doing it more and just having a feel for the script and a feel for the set and the feel for the people you're working with, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because by us doing, the, doing that, the cast and crew was, you know, constantly working and, and, and it just made the whole show that much. I mean, filming the show that much funner. You know, because yeah, actors yeah. didn't have time to really just sit down and read and, and cool off, you know. Right. Yeah. There, there's, there's no sagging time. It was like they were in character. And they, you know, we try to let, not let them get out of character. Like, I don't know. All right. It's only going to be two minutes. So, yeah, you know, just let, let's rehearse. It's nothing. I'll, you rehearse. I'll tweak this. All right. Let's shoot. And I think people were amazed that, like, we really <laughs> get get them in front of the camera as much. Uh, as we did, yeah, it's like, yeah. no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're ready. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are sometimes Courtney or the actors would be like, "Hold on, I was wearing this in the other episode." Oh, okay, okay. Go change really quick. Hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, it kept them, on, kept them on their toes, which I think is good, and and uh, and it gets you know, it gets you involved. You know, it's it's a, it gets the energy going. You know, that's a big thing too, is keeping the, the right energy levels going uh, when you're when you're doing this sort of thing. So. I think we got that down. Hey, 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 how's it going? You're listening to Hollywood Hate Me's DIY series called How to Make a Kick-Ass Web Series with No Money. I hope you like what you're hearing so far. If you do, make sure you check out the rest of the series. This is only one part of four. And you can check us out on HollywoodHateMe.com or you can look us up on Facebook and Twitter. Back to the show, Hollywood Hate Me, where we take you on filmmakers' journeys as we develop the alternative to the Hollywood system. Here's your host, T. Huff. And so what, what is uh, some of the tips you could give the listeners for, like, uh, fast uh, lighting setups? Um, Don't try and, you know, the, I think the biggest thing, and I I, I did this a lot early on is I remember one class <laughs> where it was like a basic lighting. So I'm like, you know, look, like, light this thing. And I pulled out five fucking lights to light this one thing. And, and the, the instructor, I think it was, it might've been Bill. Uh, is, he looks at me like, nah, you don't need to do this. You're, you're, you're screwing your key up. You know, and the key is like your, your main source of light. Um, Over lighting. It's like, Sometimes you just, you know, let's start with one if you need it. Like, like look at look at what you're doing, like what's in front of you and, and through the lens and, and see what you need. Like, and just start with one, you know, and see how it falls. You know, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I like to do, I like to do near, you know, the, you know, there's these sorts of techniques of like, you know, three quarter back or, you know, 90 degree off access you know side lighting you know that, that nice dramatic stuff and you fill from over top of the camera if, if you want but just be careful of like trying to add too much because then you're just you're making it harder on yourself and it takes longer and you know and when you, you gotta just get to it you know and, and and keep it simple um see and 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 the more natural light you can use the the better and uh try to i think the thing i always try to do is just 
extend that. Extend what the natural look is with your artificial lighting. You know, like if there's a lamp with a light bulb on, use that lamp as, as your main source and then enhance that with maybe uh, a smaller unit that's off camera that's kind of giving, giving the impression that that light is coming from the lamp. You know, okay. don't try to make, you know, don't try to force other things uh, into it, uh, uh, you know, than you need. Um, so the, the basic axiom is usually, is usually keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and also like one of the, one, I remember one professor said this to me, he's like, you're not, not everything is going to be like, um, that million dollar badass shot, you know, you're, you're doing a long project, you know, you're some, you're going to have to, you know, sacrifice a little cause you're trying to make the day. You got to make the day, you know, you can't, you can't miss some shots. And sometimes, you know, you're going to have to make it not as glamorous or super pretty, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, you, know, you have to pick your battles. This is, this is see, call a sword. I got, you know, I'm going to do that. This one, this, and I probably can't spend that much time on it, you know, and, and maybe at the end of the, at the end of the day, uh, it's worth it that you spent this much time on this setup, but not as much on the other, because that's what the story calls for. And that's just that what is, what is actually appropriate, uh, for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's more of a, it sounds like it's a balancing act. You know? Yeah. It, it definitely is a balancing act. I mean, like, uh, that's, that's for, I'll use an example. Like let's say you have this, this, tremendous scene where is it well is it at the end of the movie is it towards the climax well you may want to spend a lot of attention to it if it's a pivotal moment where is this scene is it middle to beginning and that's just this basic thing and it's like do i need to make this look like a million dollars you know like what's the emotional weight of the of this of this moment compared to another moment like you know mm-hmm. and i think that's that's stuff you need to decide beforehand <clears throat> um you know in your prep and and discussing with the director, like, you know, that this is a pivotal thing that I want to spend more time on. It's like that, uh, someone told me it was like the Spielberg rule, like wh- however important this scene is, this particular shot is, the amount of time you spend on it should be proportional to it. So if you have like a, you know, an insert that's going to take up one second on screen or three seconds, then spend time accordingly. Don't spend like two hours on this thing. Yeah, just, you're get a, spending just get a flashlight and just flashlight. Just blast yeah, just yeah, yeah. Is it a guy? Is it a guy <laughs> putting his key? Yeah, almost. Is it a guy <laughs> just dropping his keys, you know, into the key basket, and, you know, just as an insert. Then fuck it, just shoot the damn thing and let's move on. Yeah. Let's spend a half hour on that. But this is the scene where like the guy confesses this thing to this person he loves, and blah, blah, blah. You know, spend your time, like nail that thing, like, you know, give, give it, uh, give it the attention that it deserves and needs, uh, you know, cause it's going to have the, it has the emotional weight, uh, of, of the story. So spend the time on that, you know, so, cause not everything in a movie, uh, gets equal time, you know, and for, you know, just, just logistically speaking too. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless you have. You know, a huge budget, but even then, I mean, they, they have the same problems too, just on a bigger scale. You know, so I mean, time. Yeah, what I, and what I'm what I'm noticing a, a lot now is that there's a lot of films, or even on TV, uh, yeah, I see it on web series too, that has a lot of camera movement for no reason at at all. Yes. So what do you what do you think about that? I mean, I know that takes up time. But, you know, when we were in, in film school, we had heavy film cameras and dollies. A lot of people right. have uh, have those uh, three axis gimbals and, and yeah, cool they got the, gadgets now. Yeah, so you, you can think... make skateboard dolly, little gimbals, little drones. I mean, yeah. Um, and it's just making I, and all that stuff is making a camera movement kind of overboard. Yes. It feels like everyone's trying to make a Michael Bay movie. Yes. And uh, and uh, and that's fine if you're making a Michael Bay movie. But you know what? There's a good. There was a good thing again online, like I was saying before, about um, Kurosawa and his stuff and how he used camera movement. And it's it's fucking amazing. It's like I did I miss that day in class in school? Like they should have just had a day of just him and, and talking about camera movement because how it informs the audience and what it reveals is so badass. Like and these are like movies. These are old movies, but. Mm-hmm. 
the movement is is fantastic, you know. But it's not just for its own sake. It's it's revealing something. It's saying something. It's not just like two people talking and you're three sixteen around uh, the conversation with your steady cam or your movie or your gimbal shit or anything like that. You know, it, it is more purposeful now. And I, I think a lot of it too, though, is you want to add production value to your material. I mean, I know in class, one of the classes we had with, um, uh, was, I think it was, it was Batman. He talked about, you need to move the camera now. You can't, you can't just keep the camera static. Like, you know, back in the day, like you need, it needs to be more dynamic. You have like yeah. a moving master capture a lot of coverage, but have the camera be more dynamic. And I think people, you know, are taking that to heart and maybe in excess because you can, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, because you can, cause you have the ability to do so. Why not? I mean, <laughs> you remember what a pain in the ass it was to set up fucking dolly, yeah. a dolly track. Like it's ridiculous. It was like, Oh, this is like a, an hour long setup to lay this damn dolly track. Yeah. It's gotta be level. You gotta get the move right. Then you yeah. got to get the spray or the baby powder. Yeah. Oh, it's squeaking now. Oh, shit. There goes sound. All right. It's backing up. All right. Let's get the, let's get the spray stuff on it. All right. You're going to you're gonna push for it. Okay. Oh, you move too fast. Oh, oh we buzz the focus. Because when you do a dolly, what, what elements are you at? You're adding motion. So your, your focus puller has, to, has, has an added thing to do. The operator has an added thing to do. And your dolly grip has an added thing to do. And the actors have to hit their marks. So that's like four extra things you're adding to it, um, as opposed to you know just a, a, a you know lockdown shot. So I mean, you you know hopefully you have the peeps that are able to do that under that pressure. I mean on bigger stuff, I mean they lay dolly track like people flip burgers. I mean it's like nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. I, I worked on this feature um, in Vegas. Um, doing a feature in Vegas for like two weeks. Oh man, you don't know what you know what what side is up uh, in Vegas you know, working on a movie. But these guys just leave Dolly track like it was nothing. It was like five minutes, you know, track down, leveled, Dolly on, and they're ready to go. You know, at that level, I mean, that's like major league stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. You can you can go further with that. I mean, some I mean, there's some, some people were saying like, oh, these guys here, like speaking of Michael Bay, like they flip cars like we lay Dolly track. I mean, they're just so good at the things they do. It's mm -hmm. easy, you know, relatively for them. It's just easy for us. It's like, that's like amazing. I could never do that. I don't know how they do that. Um, yeah, but they're, yeah. they're just so, so good at it. But I mean, so when we had dolly shots and we planned them, we're like, okay, that's going to take a long time and we got to nail it. And it was eat into your damn day. Just yeah. eat it. Just suck, suck the life out of your day. Mm -hmm. Take all the energy and momentum you had of shooting and all for this damn dolly. And the kicker, what was the kicker with this? What was the thing that really fucking pissed you off? Is that dolly shot got cut in the edit. Yep. Oh, it always, <laughs> it, like 90% yeah. of the time it got cut, right? Yeah, yeah. It, or, you know, or, or it got cut in half, or you see the beginning of the movement, you cut somewhere else, then you see the end of it. Yeah, right. yeah. It wasn't, uh, it didn't fit the story. It, it, it lagged uh, the uh, momentum. It, uh, it ruined the pacing, yeah. uh, or it just didn't fucking work. <laughs> you got your dailies back. You're like, oh, we buzzed the focus there. It's, you know, she didn't hit her, her mark all the way, so focus is off. Yeah, uh, Dolly so. didn't Dolly didn't boom up enough, so um, you know the operator was off here. Like, because every little mistake adds up, and then the shot's not usable. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and just so, so and just so the listeners know, we did not use a dolly whatsoever. No. <laughs> no, we did not we, use a dolly. It was we, good old fashioned handheld. <laughs> yeah, good old fashioned handheld. But but the reason why we had it handheld for a reason, because well, yeah, it was a it was a documentary crew. Documenting exactly what was happening. Exactly, right? we made it part I mean, of the story. Yeah, and it was like a time. It was period documentary too, because yeah. now if you look at documentaries now, they have some some of them have fluid camera movement to mm -hmm. go along with their their uh, you know handheld stuff or candid interviews or whatever they add a little a little something in their non sequitur bits you know but we weren't doing that we're like no this is like this is like your doc how you would do it back then yeah and uh you know reporting yeah and yeah. And, and even though that we had it that we shot it like it was a doc back then we still planned our camera movements to like reveal stuff and, yes and, and we had a lot of fun with that
Yes. We just try to find every opportunity that we could to like reveal something within the camera movements. It could be, right. it could be a reaction. Yeah. And that was the big thing too, is always trying to nail the, re- the reaction uh, in the doc style. It's like, okay, CJ says something here and da, 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 and we whip the camera to Edwin over here and his reaction. Cause that's the funny, that's the joke. It's like, Oh, CJ is doing his obnoxious thing. Edwin's reaction. And that's, you know, that's where the humor is, is, uh, it's the action reaction stuff. And so trying to grab that as much as it's actually happening was a big, big, uh, big goal we had, I think, in a lot of the, a lot of the setups, a lot of the scenes we had. Because there was multiple people in, in a lot of our scenes, too. That's another yeah. thing, Tyrone, yeah. is that, you know, we weren't doing just mostly like one person scenes. These were three, four, you know, people scenes or shots and, or even having the whole classroom. Like, mm-hmm. so we had to get. Get cover all that cover cover the three characters who are talking and how their interaction is and then the reaction of the of the students of our student cast and then reaction of the other other people and we were trying to do that in like one or two one or two takes like yeah. get it all and be fluid and uh, and capture that as it was happening and um, you know and sometimes we fudged it a little bit because we are faux doc style we're like okay yeah. so like you would tell the actor like. You're, you're reacting to, you know, let's use CJ as an example. You're reacting to CJ, but I need you to wait a beat for the ca- <laughs> just yeah. for the camera to land on you. Because yeah. I'm going to go from here to here, and then I'm going to land on you at the end. You know, you know, you just give me that extra beat because I don't want to miss that reaction. And, you know, and that that was something we did uh, quite a lot. Yeah, and we also use it, like you said, just to uh, make sure we had a comedic beat. And then we yeah. get it to to pick up the scenes, like you know, yeah. if we had somebody running in the classroom or run out of yeah. the classroom. So we would follow that person that ran out of the classroom to catch somebody's reaction, right? Kind of thing, yeah, right, right. And it just made it more more dynamic stuff, you know. Uh, kept the energy going um, for for cutting purposes, and I think we did pretty good in that too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, when I told you, or, or I asked you if it was okay if I was going to have the blind character run into the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. We had a blind character come and, and visit the, the school, and, and he didn't really know exactly what was going on. So that was like the first time somebody actually touched the camera, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, like physically, like you know, broke the fourth wall and like, mm-hmm. like physically touched the, the our our uh, camera operator character, mm-hmm. uh, which is me, and uh, and and <laughs> jarred the camera, you know, because the only other time like we're dressed is when it, when that happened uh, is when the characters address the camera and their interview style stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, him running into the camera was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so um let me see so which episode was uh was your favorite episode oh that was the the, the paul uh paul storyline dreams dream dreams i'll be fucking your dream dream dreams so while you're dreaming i'll be fucking in your dreams you'll be dreaming what the hell is this Tight. Ah, whatever. It, it's up <laughs> the top you of my head. Like Angel. Seriously, Paul, that was amazing. Oh, uh, speak a little louder, Edwin. It's kind of hard to hear you with Paul's entire dick jammed down your throat. Relax, CJ. Paul was just singing us one of the songs he's going to teach in his class. Music class? Are you fucking kidding me? It's all part of your plan, isn't it, Paul? All part of my evil plan to take the Institute in the right direction? You know, I don't know if you heard C. Gay, but the 80s are just around the corner. Yeah, like hell they are. Okay, you know what? This isn't even up for discussion because we had a vote, which you didn't come to because you were, and I quote, breaking in the new sluts. Ah. Yeah, and I was breaking in all the new sluts, and you're welcome. I almost threw my back out. But that doesn't mean I'm going to let some handsome bastard in a nice hat that matches his eyes come into my school and take over. Okay, on that note, I think it's lunchtime, so... Yeah, I need some space. So how about everybody who has not been here at least a week exit the premises? Thank you. Well, I don't know if you got the memo, 
Uh, but this is actually my office now. But I don't even have an office. <sighs> Sucks to be you. He made CJ so insecure. Um, because CJ was like, he he was he was top dog. And yeah, then Paul comes episode. in. So that was too Paul great. comes in. Yeah, Paul comes in. He's singing and being you know, all smooth and everything. And everyone just wants, everyone wants him and wants a piece of him. And CJ is just like, you know, like, come on, guys. Like, you know, what about me? What about me? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul was pretty good. He, he, uh, the guy, the actor who played that guy, he, he nailed that. He uh, did. That role. He, he nailed it. <laughs> and, and all the actors nailed it. So it, it was great that, you know, I mean, we lucked out that the guy who came and played Paul, because I've only met him a couple of times before, you know, before we right. shot that. But we, we pretty much put two episodes on his back. Like, okay, you, you're going to have a part one and a part two. And then you're yeah. going up against CJ, which is a handful once you guys check out <laughs> the web series. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah. You basically got to hold your own with CJ. And yeah. And, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, and it worked. Yeah, no, it did. They, they, they did. He was, he was very smooth. I think their, their energy levels were, were, were perfect uh, bouncing off each other. Uh, yeah, I think that played. That just played really, really well. So yeah, th- those those two were those two were my favorites. Okay, and I was and I, and I know so you guys hear that this is a cinematographer, and he's saying because of the story reasons, not, <laughs> not, not because of any shots or anything. Right, he's saying because of the story. Exactly, because story is is the thing that that matters. Uh, not just not just making pretty shots. Um, I mean, you want it to be relative, uh, related to the actual story you're telling, you know, cause like one of the things you don't want to hear is, Oh, that movie looked great. Like, Oh, did you like the movie? Did you like what happened? Did you, did you feel for the, the dude who was trying to do this or the girl who was trying to do this or the kid mm-hmm. who was trying to do this? Ah, uh, it looked great. Like, you know, it's almost a backhanded compliment. Like, you, yeah. you know, it should be, it should be the thing that goes on top of the, Oh, that movie is awesome, and yeah. it was so, and it was cool. It looked great, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty much like a uh, some movies just end up looking like a camera test. Yes, and those are <laughs> and those are cool. I'm not gonna lie; those yeah. are, can be cool, but they are what they are. You know, like okay, that was that was a badass camera move that moved here, mm-hmm. and then you see how this happened here. That was that was awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm saying that because there's like you said there's no st- story there's no character but there's right. some awesome i mean it, the film just looks beautiful yeah you know? it's 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 pretty it's just awesome like on that technical level you know the, the people behind the camera are they're just they're just nailing it mm-hmm. they're 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 knocking it out of the park the, uh, the same you know? thing like you see with the camera tests yeah you know i mean there's a new <laughs> yeah. camera that comes out what do they do they go they go out to the desert they go to to some cliffs somewhere and yeah. they shoot some nature shots, some people walking, smiling. And yeah, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some things, um, sometimes the things that can re- that resonate the most are, are more subdued, uh, than that. I know. And that's just, that just, you know, depends on what, you know, what the story is and, and, uh, how it comes together. But man, I do like a good car chase. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> a car chase. So is that your your next uh, one of your goals? Is to shoot a car chase? Yeah, that would be that. Would, that would just be that would just be a lot of fun. I mean, there are a couple times we shot um, a car a car wreck. Well, it wasn't like a big wreck. It was like a T bone, um, and I was just operating for. Uh, I think it was. Who was what film was that? I forget, but it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, you had multiple cameras and the car, <laughs> and uh, you know, filming a collision was just uh, it was cool. Ate up a lot of time though. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, yeah, but that's that's the action genre, and that's a whole other animal for sure. Yeah. So, what are some of the uh, tips? I'm trying to think of some tips that we could come up with are some tips that we could give to the listeners as far as making a low budget, no budget or micro budget film or web series. 
Right. Um, I think the biggest thing uh, for starters to try and do is is figure out what you have. Like, what are your assets? What 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 do you have that you can get to that you have access to? Like locations, uh, gear, people. Like, make a list of that. Like, and then can your story fit around those things? If you happen to, you know, uncle, your, if your uncle happens to own, I think I did this example last time. Your uncle, uncle oh, happens to own a, a race. Last, last time a, was deleted. Remember? Yes. Yes. The last, <laughs> the, the, the last time was deleted. Um, cause, cause listeners were on take two. No, take, take, the value of take two can never be overstated. Yeah. Um, if your uncle owns like the rate, uh, horse race track and he has, you think, yeah, you can use it. Then, that's an asset or, or more on a smaller, like, Hey, my buddy has a pool in his apartment complex that, he, you know, he's totally allowed to use. Okay. We can do something by a pool. That's an asset. I have an old tiny car in, you know, in my dad's garage that's just sitting there. Well, that's an asset. You can use that too. You know, or, or there's a farm that a buddy of mine, his, you know, that, that he owns or whatever. Yeah. Or his he's friends with the owner, you know or whatever. There's, or there's a dusty cabin in the woods. Yeah, a dusty cabin in the woods. In fact, I have a friend who has a cabin in Flagstaff, Arizona, that uh, is perfect for like a little horror movie. But see, and so there you go, man. And it starts that way. Like, okay, we have a house, we have a cabin, we have this. What else do we have? Um, and starting with that, making that list, and then seeing if you can cater your story around those things, you know, you know, it, it definitely wins you, uh, some points in those, in, in that regard, because sometimes you're not going to have, you know, the money to get the cool location, the cool apartment building or the, the cool, you know, bar space bars. You remember, remember us begging bar owner to let us shoot after they closed mm-hmm. <laughs> in orange. You know, like that's an example. It's like this bar will let us shoot there, so that's an asset. You know, like yeah. okay, so we can do the bar scene, whatever it is, we can make it happen at this place. You know, and because yeah. uh, but sometimes you're not going to have that, and then you have to ask yourself, like, okay, is it worth? Do I have to do it? I mean, you know, you had to put your producer hat on when you're doing indie no budge stuff, and you're you're the guy driving the train. You have to put your producer hat on, and be like, okay, do do I need? it to be a bar maybe it's an outside cafe and i could totally fake that i can totally fake that maybe i just go shoot an exterior of a cafe and then i cut to a shot where the characters are sitting on a small table against a wall or a bush i can just shoot that fucker in my backyard yeah exactly. and it'll totally cut into that and work it'll totally work um i remember one of the things i did uh, a long time ago is I uh, we sh- I shot this HP Lovecraft uh, thing this is like eons ago this is in the 90s and uh, <laughs> it was just two kids out in the middle of the forest and we built a big box like the size of a person and mm-hmm. then and with a door with a door handle on it and the idea was like the character you know we'd shoot a watch so the character would open the door and go in and then we would cut to a to stairwell, like a dark, creepy stairwell, that we shot like com- in a completely different location, and we just cut that together, and it totally worked. It was like our little, like our fake TARDIS. Like, yeah, he walks in there, <laughs> and poof, he pops out somewhere else, and it and and it totally worked. I mean, the the power of the cut, I mean, yeah. uh, is a is a big deal, and it totally works, and. uh and cutting on action and like it, it was great, um, you know, manipulating uh, the stuff you have to fit the, the story you're trying to do. So that that yeah. that's a big tip. Uh, yeah, but then I also, have. yeah, also, I mean, you talked about locations and and props. I mean, what if you have a friend who is unique, kind of like Jay for Jay and Silent Bob, right? Or, yeah. Or. Um, Robert Rodriguez's friends who played the uh, uh, mariachi in El Mariachi. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. and of course the best, the best asset of all is people. So good, yes. good point, Tyrone. Yeah, is is people. You have a guy who 
maybe he can be, you know, he can play an instrument or he can sing or he can dance or whatever. He can juggle, whatever. Oh, there you yeah, go. The movie wants. Yes. There you go. <laughs> you know, you can use that to your advantage. Um, locations, gear and people. And from all of that, you know, you can create a story that works um, for you and you can actually try and pull it off. Because that's the thing, too. That, I mean, the, the tough thing is always is, is can you pull it off? Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and then the other thing, too, is, is just try and do it. Um, there's a lot to be said for just going out and doing it. You know, succeed or fail is just doing it. I mean, and then do it again. Um, don't worry. Don't worry about. Uh, oh, this is going to come out and look like complete. You know, this is going to be terrible. You know, just do it. You know, get get the learn learn a little bit about yourself and how you want to do it. You know, learn how hard it is. Learn how easy it is. Learn uh, learn what cool stuff you were able to do with that camera and what tricks you were able to pull off. Because each experience is another another lesson in your playbook. Uh, you can take with you to the next one. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. That was one of the great things about, you know, us doing the the web series because uh, we, we knew that we had 12 episodes. Right. And, you know, usually when you make a short film, you spend a lot of time on that one short film, you know, doing a pre production. Then you have right. the actual production. You spend a yeah. lot of time in post. It's your baby. You're, you're trying right. to find the right film festivals you're sending out to a lot of film festivals you know we knew that we were making 12 episodes that we had to get done uh two yeah. commercials and then also character interviews so yeah. so so uh we just shot like crazy and didn't even you know think about it yeah yeah didn't, didn't spend too much time dwelling on like oh you know what are we doing this is crazy like no we're just gonna keep doing it and 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 churning out product and that that's totally what we did and you can make a nice little package of that now, Tyrone. Seriously. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, so I was just thinking, um, you know, uh, you saw a lot of it through the the, the, the viewfinder, you know, shooting, yeah. shooting this web series. What did yes. you think of what did you think when you went to that first uh screening of it? Like when it all came together with the music and we had that screening. Oh man, that's like it's such a cool feeling when you see it all come together. Because you only see your part. I think, you know, for most crew folks, they only see their portion of it. They're like, oh, you know, that's my set. I remember designing that or or I remember lighting that or remember shooting that or whatever. But then you see it all together, you know, sound, color, music, you know, it's fucking great. It's a, it's just a, a, a victorious feeling because it's, it's more complete. I mean, it's the full thing. And, uh, and then you all the stuff you thought like, Oh yeah, that's going to be funny. And it is, <laughs> but it's, it's even better. It's like, Oh, that totally hits and the music and da da da. And like the cut there was perfect. Yes. You know, that was better than I thought it would be, you know, and you'll, you'll always have that. And, uh, and yeah. that's just, you know, a huge, a huge, uh, amount of satisfaction. Um, no matter what anyone says, like is, is that completed product on the screen? Uh, you see, yeah, yeah, man. for for sure. Yeah, I hear you. And I was happy with uh, when I saw the first, well, not the first cut, like you know, the final cut. Yeah, I was uh, I, I was pretty proud. I was patting myself on the back because I did not know how we were going to pull it off. Because <laughs> yeah. like you know, it's a it's a film series that's set in the seventies about it's a comedy about porn, right? right. And and I didn't I, like like you said earlier. We didn't know we were towing the line, like if we were going to go a little too far to the right. porn side or, or, right. or not even be funny at all. Right. But, you know, it came together nicely. Yeah, no, it, it did. And uh, I think it was ahead of its time, Tyrone, ahead of its time. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, man, that's that's pretty much about it. Cool. Thanks, thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. Take two, man take two <laughs> you better yeah. make sure you got it this time that's right listeners you have to be determined if you mess up you gotta you gotta swallow your pride and say uh we need to do it again guys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even yeah. though you know it may piss off everybody 
you got to yes. say, oh, you know what? I forgot something. We need to. Well, I didn't forget something. It was a technical. It was yeah. a technical problem. But sometimes when you're on set as a director or, or as the yourself, the DP, you got to say, oh, we kind of missed something. We got to go back and shoot that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely do not be afraid to speak up. Because <laughs> you don't, will don't, regret it. You will regret it. You Don't get too mouthy. Be like, no, let's do it. Let's do that again. You know, don't throw anyone under the bus, especially if you're, you know, you have your camera crew. Just say, "My bad, I, I messed up," or "Can we do that again?" I, mm. I, I want to do this, you know. And sometimes you can work out a secret, like wink, wink, with your director and be like, "If you don't want, he doesn't want to, you don't want him to take the bullet if he's trying to get a performance out of the actor, so you take it for him." You're like, "No, I need another one," because you know he wants to do another one, but the actor might not want to do another one. Yeah. So then you take oh I need another one, yeah. and then he and then he gets his n- another one and everyone saves face. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're letting out a little too many secrets there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe edit that one out. That's, that's bonus stuff. <laughs> See, they have to pay for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that one's gonna cost you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, but yeah, man, it's always fun to talk to you and catch up with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for for coming on this uh, series. Yeah, man, anytime. It was a lot of fun. All right, until next time. Thanks for listening to Hollywood Hate Me with T. Huff. We here at Hollywood Hate Me love your support and can't wait to give you some movie making insights in the next episode. Hey, what's up? You guys still there? Good, 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 good. Yeah, I know you heard Robert say, okay, you got your bonus stuff or this is bonus. Well, you know, me and Robert, uh, like I said before, we like to geek out. So there's some stuff that I cut out of the show. But here is a little bit of bonus stuff that I put back in just for you guys who hung all the way to the end. Just as a little treat. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Well, here you go. A little bit of bonus with Robert. Make sure you check out our next episode. You can actually go through and do the thing you and I were just talking about, about reverse engineering. Like, okay, yeah. I have these 10 locations. Let's come up with this story around these locations that I know I have. You know, because yeah. locations are a huge cost and a huge pain in the ass to find and lock down. It now, is. If you can do that, you can, man, now you, you're, now you got some, you got these assets working for you. It's what they call assets, right? And then, and then now you're crafting it around the stuff you have, and you and who knows, you know they, they say the limitations are are an artist's best friend, you know, because it really makes you focus on how to come up with a solution in a creative way. And then you have these assets, you know, these weird, interesting locations, and then you go, okay, who do I? What stuff do I have with gear? You know, what stuff do I have with friends who might want to help me do this? You know, and all that adds up, and that and that has value to it too. I mean. You could put a monetary value on those things. Yeah. Say, hey, my budget was this, you know. But when you add all this other stuff, you're like, you know, my budget was actually a little bit bigger, you know, yeah. like in, in terms of worth and value. But I mean, I think if you can do that sort of thing, it really, it really just helps in the process. I yeah, mean, and it also add originality to your story too. Right. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, there was there's a movie. I don't know if there's a. Um, if there's a section of the podcast, you know, you bring up other indie things. But there's a cult yeah. movie that my buddy showed me, and it's on YouTube for free. It's called, I think it's called the, the FP. Have I, okay. have, I, have, I, have I mentioned this to you at all? No. I don't think I have. The FP? But I the FP. You can look it up, and it's this guy and his sister and his buddy who's a DP, a, a big-time DP. And he just they just did this movie in this town. So in their assets, they had this town. I believe the sister was a big uh, uh, production designer, a costume designer, um, and she did all these costumes. And they wrote this incredible movie that they so commit to. It is, it is about these, uh, basically these these uh, kind of gang members. They fight, but when they fight, they do Dance Dance Revolution. And if you lose in Dance Dance Revolution, the other person dies. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they, they created like this whole other language, like this weird hip street talk like and the actors went full on into their roles and like 
everything was committed. It's super, super budgety. Like, I think it looks like they shot it on a D, on like not even DVX 100, like like old Canon, whatever they call and Canon GL ones. Oh, Remember like the those? GL one or the XL ones, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Or XL twos. Yeah, right, XL two. <laughs> Like it had that digital, like digital video quality to uh-huh. it. It was clearly not film, man. Like, but you can look at the trailer on YouTube, and it, it's insane. They just went to this town and and made this movie, and they, uh, you know, they pulled. They probably got a few favors in it, but it's super budgety and it, and it's it's awesome. And they totally knew what they were, and yeah. they fully committed to it. And it was so much. You could tell they had a lot of fun making. Uh, making the movie and I think that's the other thing added to too and you have all the things uh, you know it, that you can, can that you can get uh, together to make mm-hmm. a movie and he adds you can add a lot of that fun element to it like in terms of making it like, yeah. you have all these things let's do this you know and it'll get you going too another thing it'll inspire like get you revved up to do it because what's the what are the stumbling blocks of, of making a movie too it's not just money it's mentally it's like can we do this yeah like like, you know, I'm not going to have X, Y, or Z, but should I do this? You know, I know how hard it is to make you make this movie. How, how can I do this? But if you have these things that you've turned into advantages, you know, it gets you excited and pumped to, to make the movie. And that excitement always, always transfers to the people that end up working with you. And there's there's a lot to be said for that. So Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what makes it doable. Once you, you know that you have, like you say, you know you have the locations. You know, you have like these weird props or you probably have a a friend or two who are naturally unique characters, you know. (laughs) Right. And and then that just makes a fun original movie or or, or web series, whatever you plan on doing. And that's one of the things, you know, as far as what we did with uh, with uh, the Institute was, I mean, we did the exact opposite, but (laughs) but, but, uh, we found a way to make it work. And the right. thing is that people just got pumped up about the whole ideal of it and uh, yeah. just came on board. Yeah. And the thing is, yeah. like you said, with the sound like the filmmakers for what was it called? The FP? The FP yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the FP. And like with us, we were, uh, you know, everybody was fully committed to the project right. and just had fun <laughs> with it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's basically, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's a hard thing in making a movie. You know, or make it a web series, or just any, yeah. any creative endeavor like that. You're putting yourself out there. You're you need a lot of help to execute. I mean, you kind of enjoy it. You know, it's it's a it's a cool ride. Uh, you know, one of those journey versus destination things that people often talk about. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's it can be a really cool journey, and you get better just by doing it. And then you want to do it again. You know, it's it definitely spurs you on. Yeah, and you and you start to find, like in any TV show, like for web series stuff, you start to find the voice of that show of that project. You know, I think and every most shows they go through that. I mean, even on the big levels, you can like, oh, like, uh, God, like uh, I think shows like Seinfeld or or, or even like, um, God, what else am I thinking of? They they evolve. Uh, Sex in the City. Oh, you know, it's funny you, you said Sex in the City because I was going to say the same thing. I bought a Sex in the City DVD set, you know, for my <laughs> wife, right? Right. And and I remember seeing some of the later episodes, but then when I went back to the first season, season one, I was like, "Whoa, this is a completely different show." Right. Mm-hmm. What were you All about right, to yeah. say about Sex in the City? I'm exactly the what you just said. Like if you compare <laughs> the where it is at the beginning versus where it, where it ends up. Like, you know, shows evolve. They, they, they find their voice or they find the direction they want to take it in. Um, another show that I was a huge fan of was, um, fringe, a big sci-fi. Thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the first season they were still searching for it and they had this one storyline and then season two, you know, in the middle, I think they just totally went away from it. Cause like, there was like the one character, like it was Adam Scott was his name. The one with, um, um, what was her name? Anna Anna Torv, I think, is the the main character who plays Olivia. Yeah, I'm not... like it it was, um, and that was like a love interest thing too. And they just went away from that. They're like, yeah, you know, this is what it is. It becomes this. It's not this anymore. Um, and I think you know when you're doing a web series, that same thing can happen. You're like, you know what? It started out being 
about her and this guy or this guy and his buddy. But it, really, the the meat of the story is it's this thing right here. Yeah. You know. You know. And you and you adjust to that, and then you you know your material will reflect that. And, and that, I think that's a good thing too. I mean, yeah. You know. I mean, this. Yeah. I think that. It's cool to see how those things happen in a show or in a web series over time. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, you got some bonus stuff right there. <laughs> cool. 